Now joined by Jets general manager Joe Douglas. Joe, the top of the second round, you stay at pick 34 and you take Elijah Moore. Why was he the right choice for the Jets? Look, Elijah is a guy that we were all excited about, uh, and, when, and when we were uh, when we finished our night last night, and we're we're all in the room hoping that uh, a player his caliber could slide through the first round, and it ended up coming to fruition. And so, you know, we spent the day you know hashing out a couple things, but um, absolutely excited about Elijah, his versatility, uh, his toughness, his, his uh, the, the way he produces week in and week out in the SEC. And so just feel like he's a great fit for the culture that we're, we're building here. Zach Wilson, Elijah Vera Tucker, Elijah Moore, all three offensive players. What do you think about the way that that side of the ball is coming together after free agency and now your first three picks in the draft? Yeah, obviously excited to get guys that we, we all had ranked um, as first round caliber players and, and top tier players that could come in and, and uh, you know, hopefully come in and compete. Uh, earn a spot and become impact players for our offense and our team moving forward. So uh, just just adding adding people, um, you know, I talk about a lot, but adding people of the highest caliber of character. And we feel good about uh, our, our first three selections in terms of what they bring both on and off the field. Outside of character, what's the common denominator between the three guys that you've drafted this year? I would say certainly a love and passion for this game. I think all three guys are obsessed with football and obsessed with winning. And so you see that, you see that in their play. Um, when you talk to people uh, around, around their programs, they, they, that's the constant that, that's always brought up is their passion, their, their intensity, their love of the game. What does it say about Elijah Moore that he led the nation in receptions, receiving yards per game, and he played in the SEC? Well, obviously, those are big time stats, and you know he's a uh, he's a player that can line up uh, all over the formation and, and do damage for an offense. And feel really good about his ability to uncover, uh, create some easy throws for the quarterback. Uh, has great hands and uh, great ability to make uh, make runs in the open field. So, um, just excited about his versatility and playmaking skills. Joe, so when you're sitting there at 34, even you know last night into tonight, how do you balance? Picking a player at 34 and knowing that your next selection, as it stands, is pick 107, and also just wanting to stay at 34 and pick the best player available. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we feel good about adding three first-round caliber players to our team. Um, you know, certainly, giving up those three first-round picks, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be tough watching uh, good players come off the board. But also excited about tomorrow, uh, where we're sitting right now with two fourth-round picks, two fifth-round picks, and two sixth-round picks. And, uh, you know, I feel feel great about our process leading up to this point. And uh, we're going to continue to follow the board and add quality players. Can you talk about the importance of day three? You mentioned that you have six picks as it stands right now. And also the undrafted free agent process. How does that work? Oh, uh, no, that's that's a great question because day three of the draft is is a great opportunity to make to turn a good draft into a great draft. And so uh, our scouts do such a great job of gathering information. And so as a scout, you live for day three because these are the guys that not many people know about. And so you really have to, you really have to do a lot of deep dives to know about uh, some of these players that are going to get drafted in the sixth and seventh round, undrafted free agents. And uh, so many times we've seen throughout the NFL, these sixth, seventh round undrafted free agents become impact players and uh, just stalwarts for their, their franchises. So, um, it's a great opportunity to, to really put a put a great stamp on this draft. You know, I don't want you to give away any state secrets, but what's the evaluation process on day three? Are you looking for a specific trait that you can develop, or how do you how do you view the prospect? Maybe with through a different lens than day one and two. Yeah, we we get our scouts together, and we we really. We, we, we gather the group and we really ask them, who are the guys that you guys are, are most excited about? Just a restacking of the board. We had that meeting about an hour, hour and a half before the draft begins. And then we go to work. You know, we, we, follow, we follow the board just like we have we've done for the first two days. And uh, we try to add the players that have the explosive traits that we're looking for, that fit, fit the culture that we're all trying to build. And, uh, you know, you just, you just let the board keep coming to you. Awesome. Appreciate the time, Joe. Thanks a lot.
No problem. Thank you.